तो हाय गाइस इट्स मी दीपक एंड एज यू कैन गेस फ्रॉम द टाइटल ऑफ द वीडियो दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट इंप्लीमेंटिंग एआई इन द स्नेक गेम सो टू गिव द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ व्हाई आई एम डूइंग दिस वीडियो यू हैव टू गो बैक टू मच बैक आई मेक अ वीडियो अबाउट हाउ टू मेक अ स्नेक गेम that was the first piece of code for a game that i written myself uh, so i was very proud of that game feeling a proud and uh, and few weeks back i make a video about uh, implementing ai algorithm and visualizing it I thought, what will happen if I make the A star implementation in the snake game? Because uh, snake is about finding the uh, fruit and eating it, but uh, it didn't work out because it was slow. Because I have to process uh, tail at every single point, and it becomes a uh, little bit hassle. But maybe if there is a big, uh, good programmer who can do it and uh, produce the time that it takes to examine the board, uh, he can do it better than me. But uh, I couldn't, so. Uh, I left it that, left it there, and uh, I move on. So I thought maybe I should implement something else, like neural evolution, augmented topologies, uh, implementing maybe uh, some other library that may be available. But uh, then I thought about something, like these things, these libraries, TensorFlow, using different APIs. Uh, they're not actually I'm doing machine learning. I'm just using APIs, and it's ha happening on the other end. So I wanted to do machine learning myself. I mean, I have I wanted to implement the algorithm myself, write the code myself because uh, that way I will learn more because uh, you usually learn about how to make neural networks and all that thing. But uh, when you come to practice, you don't actually do it. So maybe I thought this would be a good uh, practice and good way to start with the and um, I mean implementing code like this. So that's what I did this time. I look at some videos on YouTube, uh, look at some websites uh, on how I can do it. Some were helpful, some were not. I will link all those mm, websites and YouTube videos in the description. Special YouTuber that really helped me in this video. Uh, I will also link that in the description for, for that. So let's uh, move on uh, to uh, what how I started. So in the starting, I thought about uh, giving Snake few uh, few inputs, as in uh, the eight uh, eight different uh, ways it can go, as well as the result from the fruit. What will be the uh, better way and uh, based on that it will move and uh, also give it a distance from tail as well that I read on a website uh, couldn't think of myself uh, and uh, it didn't work out as I planned so I gave up on that and then I found a video on YouTube and it was really helpful because it actually uh, taught how to make a neural network from scratch uh, first time I uh, found out how you uh, implement the activation functions in the hidden layers and uh, how to make uh, the hidden layers and uh, as how the activation actually occur and uh, you know I talked about in my videos my previous videos about how when you get a certain stimulus the network fire and it will give uh, to the uh, it will move to the other uh, other set of layers so let's say you have certain inputs let's say suppose you have numbers and all and on the other hand on the output layer there are nine numbers in the in the input you have like a 784 pixels you then there are the hidden layers uh, based on certain characteristics that you recognize if uh, that the one that matches the most will fire and then it will move to the next layer where if uh, the one with the most input uh, with the most probability will fire and give the desired output uh, it's sort of like uh, happen like that way uh, so i thought uh, about doing that uh, i take the board and give it to the network and the network will figure out how to process it so let's talk about uh, how the play actually went. So I think I just encountered one more issue that programmer has to go through. The one that is actually training the data set. You need a reliable power source because oversupply. Because if you don't have a reliable power supply and you are training a neural network, um, it will take an eternity to train the model. And especially if uh, you're having a hundred population and a hundred generations, then uh, God forbid if uh, like after a few generation the uh, power went off, uh, then you are doomed, you have to start from the gain. Nice! Start from 
the zero generation and it's really a big deal for me because i use a desktop and uh, many times there's a power outage here because it's a uh, rainy season here so the power really went off and uh, the, like i thought coding was tough then i thought debugging your code was tough and now <laughs> there is another issue that i've encountered like i have to have a power supply i don't want to use inverter because uh, I, i think uh, it may uh, Yeah, I don't know how my system in some ways. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, this is I don't want to uh, new issue here. So uh, I was coding it, and also there's one more issue. Like uh, sometimes the issue come when I'm creating a new generation, and like there are hundred population, I'm creating hundred population at one time. So the time that I wasted it, it, it literally takes like a half an hour almost to train one generation, and then you. Uh, encounter error so it's really difficult to uh, first of all to uh, debug the whole code because uh, it's not easy then you debug your code then you rerun then you have to waste half an hour sitting there uh, so uh, you just uh, you can just uh, look at the tile bar um, you know on the on top of your screen you can see how much time i wasted just uh, to train this one generation and uh, even when i'm making this video uh, i have only trained like six generation so far because power usually went out uh, even when i'm recording this video uh, power has went out twice uh, at this point maybe i will make a follow up video after this one that will have more uh, generation train i will send this code to my friend and he will train it and he will see how many uh, at which generation he will ha- uh, he can have a more reliable snake that can uh, eat more apples at this point uh, i have only one that can eat three so let's talk about the code so in the starting i give the in- uh, give the input as the whole board I will mark fruit as fruit and uh, active spaces and tails as uh, different things. And uh, uh, also, this one issue that I encountered was uh, you have to give a fitness uh, variable as well. Like you cannot let the uh, snake sit at one place because if it's sitting at one place, it's not going to die, and it's going to waste a lot of time. I learned that a hard way, and I had to restart the generation because it was wasting a lot of time. Because First of all, in the first case, it doesn't have a tail in the first generation, and it's not going to die. Maybe by hitting the wall, but sometimes it just sit at one place and turn left, right, turn left, right. So it was not working that way. It will give a fitness uh, variable as well. So I give like two hundred points, and when it eat a fruit, I will give it a hundred more points, so it can stay alive, and it will think that food eating food is good for it. Also, I added a score as well, so that also helps. And when the score are tying, I'm just looking at the fitness. Sometimes because it can hit the wall and sometimes it will not. So those were the factors I take into while I was uh, making the code work. Initially, I thought I should just have one snake at the point and it will uh, run and die. Then the next book, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. And having uh, five snakes at a time, it's going to take nearly the same time. Uh, but it looks better when you have more snakes at the window than just one because you think it's working faster. It's not. It's going to take the same amount of time. But uh, I just thought maybe uh, in this way I can uh, at least uh, see different snakes at the same time and see how their uh, network is different. Because at the first uh, in the first generation, everyone has different layers. Uh, they're just random at first, so it's not like uh, one is really good. Uh, unlike my Flappy Bird game, in which uh, the only thing they have to figure out was. Uh, Uh, I mean, a uh, uh, flappy one is a uh, really easy one because you just have to avoid the uh, pipes. And I was using neat at that time, so I don't know how that works. But uh, when you, when I made the game, uh, it was uh, in the first generation. Uh, one of the uh, population was able to uh, like go until like two hundred points or more. I, I just uh, exit at the two hundred because I don't want to wait that long. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, even after like I don't, I don't think even after like twenty generation, you will have a snake that can play like an actual human. Far from it. Maybe after like fifty or seventy generation, it will be able to uh, play decently. Al- although I have so far only run like uh, six generations, and uh, at this point, it can only eat like three tails. Sometimes it eat four, but that is a fluke because. The food just uh, appear at uh, near near the snake. Also here you can see I have uh, uh, made the game where now I have uh, five snakes at the time and uh, they move differently. And you can even see that in the first generation how dumb they are. I was actually saying like go up, go up or go down. I was so fed up with uh, doing the model at the same time. And uh, this uh, footage is actually sped up at uh, like ten times. So what you are seeing is uh, like. Uh, Ten times faster than what I was seeing, and it's actually really uh, boring to just sit back and 
watch uh, these things don't do anything sometimes they eat it but it's usually because uh, it's really close to them or uh, i don't know the new network is random so what you can expect from them is uh, nothing because it will only gonna improve after two generations it's like how genetic algorithm actually works uh, so so far uh, i'm talking about genetic algorithm but i haven't talked about how they actually works i think i should just give you some context on how they work so at first what's going to happen is uh, you're going to have a random generation then uh, you're going to see which one were doing the best you want to take them then you're going to uh, have to uh, the same amount of, of population are taking like there were 100 population i was taking 25 then i was taking 25 and mutated them by the mutating them i'm using like zero point, like a uh, very small mutation is there in the hidden layers uh, how they work so there are very small changes that i'm doing in the when i'm mutating them and then i'm also taking 50 random again so 25 are the best 25 are best with mutations and uh, side mutations and then the 50 that are completely random and then i'm saying which one uh, then i'm again doing again the same thing picking up 25 that were best that have the highest score the highest fitness also in this code i don't have the walls and uh, this is like the third time and i'm saying in a video that <laughs> I'm too lazy to build walls. So uh, you can see on the screen, uh, it's like a, at this point I think I was in second generation or third generation. In this photo, looking and actually the snakes were starting to move. Uh, at that point, I figured out a mistake that I was making. Like when I when you have a lot of tail, you have a collision. Uh, initially, this is just a uh, okay. So one thing I have to make clear is the the code of the snake game is uh, just the game a code that I have on the GitHub. I will link that in the description. Uh, I should have just read write the whole code. Rather than uh, using the whole code because it was based on a game, not for implementing AI. And that time when you have a collision with snake, uh, you return. Uh, I mean, you uh, you lose. That was the whole. Uh, that was uh, how you lose the game. There was no wall here again. So uh, after I think few generation, I realized the mistake because uh, when I return it, I return score and there was no variable x. Uh, there was a variable a score, but it was on a list that I have to return. I have returned the whole list of snakes, and that didn't happen. And uh, so these are the few mistakes that you realize uh, as you train your model. And I don't want to say it wastes your time because you learn uh, these things, and they're definitely they are definitely gonna uh, help me in future. But uh, at present, it seems like a huge uh, waste of time, especially on a Sunday when you should relax. But uh, Sunday has uh, lost its value since the lockdown has started and uh, I just want to say that uh, this video was interesting and uh, if you like this video or if you like uh, this way of me making the videos and if you want a tutorial or uh, a walkthrough of the code, uh, tell me in the comment section and I will make one and also uh, check the description, I'm going to link some uh, good resources that I find on internet and YouTube, um, they really help me in making of this video. So check that in the description and if you like the video subscribe press the bell icon and i hope i see you in my next video uh, peace